is letter H. That was the next one that was requested. So for this one, we're setting up a system of equations. So when I see angles 1, 2, and 3, I can think of a few different relationships. Well, I know that 1 and 2 are supplementary. I know that 2 and 3 are supplementary. And I also know that 1 and 3 are congruent. 1 and 3 are congruent because they're corresponding angles. 2 and 3 are supplementary because they're same side interior. 1 and 2 are supplementary because we can tell we have this straight line. This is 180 degrees that these two angles are supplementary to each other. So, we can do a few different things. Why don't we take angles 1 and 2 and add them together and set them equal to 180. So I have 4y plus 20 plus 3x plus 15 equals 180. Whenever we see two variables, the majority of the time we're going to do a system of equations. So start thinking that way. So now I can rearrange. I get 3x plus 4y equals, and when I add 20 and 15 together, I get 35. Subtract that from 180, and I get 155. So that's one equation. My next one's going to be when I add 2 and 3 together and set them equal to 180. So I can get 3x plus 15 plus 3x plus 3y equals 180. And I get 6x plus 3y equals, well, 180 minus 15 gives me 165. I think I noticed a mistake here. 180 minus 35 is 145. Oh, man. Sorry about that, guys. So those are my two equations. All right. So now I can put these two together. This is my system right here. So I'm going to try and cancel out one of our variables. I'm going to multiply the bottom one by negative 2 because that's going to allow me to cancel out the x's right here. So what I have here is negative 6x minus 8y equals, and I'm going to get negative 290. And then, of course, I still have my red equation, which is the 6x plus 3y equals 165. So, when I add these together, these guys cancel out. I'm left with negative 5y equals negative 125, which means that we're going to get y equals, I'm running out of room here, Five. Sorry, twenty-five. All right. So if I get y equals twenty-five, I can substitute that back in. I can substitute twenty-five back into one of the equations to solve for x. So I can take this guy here, plug it in, say right here, and solve for x. For x, I will end up getting fifteen. So, it asked me to find the measure of angle 1. Well, if I do that, I'm going to plug both of these guys. 25 is going to go right. I should just have to plug that guy in there. And I get 120. This 4 times 25 gives me 100. Plus 20 gives me 120. So my final answer is going to be 120 degrees. All right. So really, we didn't have to solve for x. Only needed to solve for y. Cool. Next one. All right. Another proof. So, for this one here,
So we have that VW or sorry, we have that WZ bisects angle VWX. So if it bisects it, I know that these two angles are congruent. I also know that that line and that line are parallel. VY and WX. So when I see parallel lines, I think congruent angles or supplementary angles, something like that. Well, if I draw this out, here's my transversal, my two parallel lines. I see here that I have this angle and this angle that are going to be congruent because of alternate interior angles. So if I have those congruent, I know that eventually I can take from this angle here and this angle here being congruent and these two being congruent, well, transitive is going to tell me that these two are congruent, therefore my two sides are congruent and I have an isosceles triangle. So let's write it out. So I have my two angles congruent, so we have angle VWZ congruent to angle ZWX, and that's by definition bisect, def bisect. All right, and then we have this angle is congruent with this guy, and I end up with angle VZ. Let me make it a little smaller here so I can fit it all. Angle V Z W is congruent to angle Z W X. And we have parallel, then alternate interior angles congruent. Next thing I have, transitive property, angle V, W, Z is congruent to angle V, Z, W, transprop, number five, well if those guys are congruent then I know my legs are congruent so VW congruent to VZ, and that's if angles, then sides. And lastly, I have myself an isosceles triangle. Triangle VWZ is iso, and that's definition. ISO triangle. Boom, done. So it's problem D from your little sheet. So this is a proof by contradiction. So we always start these out by saying our two options of our proof. So either D E is congruent to EF or DE is not congruent to EF. And then we assume that DE is congruent to EF. So if they are congruent, well there's a couple other things I noticed. I want to somehow contradict what I have here in the given. This guy right here, which says HE is not the perpendicular bisector of DF. I'm thinking that because it says that it's not the perpendicular bisector of DF, I can prove that it is the perpendicular bisector, therefore getting a contradiction. And after all, that's what we want, a proof by contradiction. So well, when I see circles, I often think about drawing radii because we know that they're congruent and that can be helpful. So, draw 
DO and FO since two points determine a line. Then, let's see here, DO is congruent to FO, all radii congruent. these guys are good to go. Well, now what I have here is that O is the same distance to D as it is to F, and E is also the same distance as D to D as it is to F. So I have two points, O and E, that are equidistant to DF. Well, that sounds like a perpendicular bisector theorem. So what I'm going to say here is that HE perpendicularly bisects df and that's by the perpendicular bisector theorem so perpendicular bisector by the perpendicular bisector theorem alright well however this contradicts the given our assumption is false therefore I like to do three dots for therefore DE is not congruent to EF. And that is that for our proof by contradiction. Make sure you're prepared for a proof by contradiction on the test tomorrow. All right, last problem. So our last one here, finding the restrictions on X. So for these, we need two sides of our inequality. Our answer should eventually look something like this, with numbers over here, well, a number over here and a number over here as well. That's what we want our final answer to look like. So, let's see what we know. I know that 120 is going to be bigger than x plus 10 because the exterior angle is always greater than either of the remote interior angles. So either this angle here or this angle up here. So, what I have is that x plus 10 is less than or equal to 120. If it's less than or equal to 120, I already know that it's less than 180. Sorry, just less than 120. So I already know it's less than 180 as well. So there's no sense in putting the 180 in there. However, it needs to be greater than 0, because I can't have an angle of 0 or less than 0. So now we can solve. We're going to subtract 10, and we get negative 10 is less than x less than 110, and this is our final answer. So the setup is what it comes down to. The theorem that we used is our exterior angle inequality theorem. So exterior angle inequality theorem is what we used. And that's that. You guys have a wonderful day and keep it real.